am David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Join me as we uncover unique energy solutions across Canada. Every week, we'll bring you the stories of people in businesses and communities who are changing the way we power this country. Today, we're in Calgary, Alberta to interview author Chris Turner. He wrote the book called The Geography of Hope and another book called The Leap. Today we're going to talk to him about the three big leaps he sees in the green energy revolution. The big three are uh, energy, obviously, how we make and use energy. Uh, urban design, you know, more than 50% of us now live in cities. It'll be 80% by mid-century living in cities, so urban design is very important. And then the third one is transportation, how we get around and the kind of energy we use to get around. So in your book, you talk about some pretty dramatic examples of leaps in transportation. What's one of them? Well, I mean, the biggest one and, and, and probably the most exciting one is the, is the rise of high-speed rail. And I, I look specifically at, at, at the Spanish case because they went from one of the worst rail systems in Europe to now probably the best uh, and did so inside of a generation. So just how fast are those trains? Well the, the Ave, the Spanish train, uh, tops out at about 320 kilometers an hour so you know it's an order of magnitude faster. The ICE trains which are the German high speeds were at 200 to 230 now we're up at 300 plus. The uh, Chinese and Japanese trains are even faster than that so so we're really seeing some staggering jumps in terms of speed and what that means is that sort of middle distance so you know we're standing here in Calgary to get from here to Edmonton on a high-speed train when you factor in the transit time to get to airports and things like that would be a faster way to get from one city to the other. Creating better transportation systems actually starts to affect the urban design of the places we live to make them more sustainable. You know, a lot of the, the best cases are coming out of Germany where they've really done some amazing things recently and the, you know there's uh, in Freiburg in, in, in southern Germany has, has you know, designed a sort of new suburban model in their in their suburb of Alban which is basically you're know, building from scratch for urban density and urban use. So when you go to Valbon, it's you know built at that classical European size of you know four to six stories. There's a you know mix of housing. There's the apartments. There's townhouses. But it's all quite you know quite sort of dense and and and, and extremely walkable. They actually decided to allow no cars. Uh, and no permanent parking inside the community at all, so there's tons and tons of great public space. It's already well served by transit, and so what, what you're seeing in, in terms of urban design is basically returning to the time before automobiles, the way we built stuff before we built it all for cars for half a century. Turner writes about many innovations in urban design in his books, including a European-style development that replaced a standard mall in Denver, Colorado. Okay, so what's the leap in energy? The, the leap that we need to make in energy is basically to supplant non-renewable energy with renewable energy almost entirely inside, let's say, the next 50 years or so. Uh, so right now, you know, globally, more than 80% of the primary energy we use is from fossil fuels, from coal, gas, and oil. Uh, we need to move from that to wind, solar, biomass, geothermal, uh, some small-scale hydro, maybe some more large-scale hydro, maybe some nuclear, we're not sure, but definitely just take all of the carbon out of the energy economy over the next uh, half century or so. And so you found a pretty spectacular example of this in Germany again. Yeah, the German example is, is probably the most impressive simply because it's you know a, a huge industrial nation, one of the world's leading export economies. And inside of 10 years, they went from you know, uh, uh, you know, three or four, maybe five percent of their electricity grid being renewably powered to the point now where you know more than twenty percent with a bullet uh, is is now green energy. Not only are they bringing more of that stuff onto the grid, but they've become global leaders in the manufacture of the stuff: solar panels, wind turbines, uh, other sort of uh, energy efficient technologies. Really, any sector of that economy you look at now. Germany's in the lead, 300,000 jobs created, $50 billion a year industry. So what they're finding is not only have they switched from one energy source to another, but they've switched from one industrial base to another. Germany's leap cost the average ratepayer only about $50 a year until 2011. That's when success resulted in twice as much solar being installed as they planned for. So is Canada leaping or crawling? Uh, there have been some very encouraging signs uh, at, at municipal scale in certain cities. We're standing here next to a wind-powered sea train system, so that's you know, encouraging. Ontario has copied the German legislation, so they're doing some really interesting stuff. Uh, you're seeing other things happen in BC and, 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 and Nova Scotia and elsewhere in terms of renewable energy investment. But we haven't made that kind of big mental shift to recognizing the necessity of this change. We are still sort of stuck in a mentality that, you know, that might be nice to have one day, but we don't need it right now. And I think that's where we're lagging behind. 
Today we are speaking to author Chris Turner about three big leaps in the green energy revolution. If you'd like more information about the series, visit our website at www.greenenergyfutures.ca. We'd love to hear from you on Facebook or Twitter. I'm David Dodge.